Santa Maria City Spotlight Show. Welcome back. I'm your host, Perry Smith, for AM 1220 KHTS, and we talk about all things city every third Friday from 10 to 11. And here in the studio, we have City Assistant Manager Frank Oviedo and the Director of Arts, Parks, Community Services, and Recreation. Throw in a little few things there every time I hit <laughs> the name. Rick Gould. Um, Rick, we were just talking about a huge gain for the Open Space Preservation District for the city. Um, we, you kind of alluded to it. Uh, the Los Lomas Project. Uh, that adds a huge chunk of land. And uh, it's, it's, I think a lot of people in the city are considering that a big victory. Can you talk to me a little bit about what that means? Sure, I can. Um, Los, the Los Lomas Project was a project that uh, came uh, out. It was a proposed development. Um, in the uh, Newhall Pass area. Um, and just to give you a sort of a physical description, if you're driving up from the Los Angeles area, as soon as you hit the intersection of the 5 and the 14, it was fundamentally most of the land on the east side of the 5 from that intersection all the way until you hit the city limits, Calgrove. It was about 550 acres. And the really significant thing about that proposed development is it was going to be 5,500 units which is just a stunning amount of homes and probably mostly built in sort of a multifamily style so stacked on top of each other. I don't remember the cubic yards of grading that went with this project but it was a huge number. I, I want to say 500 million cubic yards but I'm sure I'm wrong. It was a staggering amount of grading and those beautiful hills with the cliffs that you see every day as you drive o over the Newhall Pass into Santa Clarita would fundamentally have been ob obliterated. And one of the more incredulous things that was part of that development, one that I always kind of gave me a smile, was they had, in, in order to make it transit-oriented development and make it more favorable for approval, they had proposed a, uh, an elevator that went down to the train tunnel where the Metrolink goes through which I just, you know, I scratched my head at. So. So, so you're talking about drilling an enormous hole into the basically tunneling through a hill. I, exactly. And, and there, there were many parts of that uh, that development. The, the amount of traffic that we thought would hit the five freeway was staggering. And so the city was very aggressive. The city council um, and the community was very aggressive in opposing the Los Lomas development. And it essentially uh, was, um, it, it sort of hit the skids or, or died. Um, could be brought back, obviously, but it really just sort of uh, hit the skids about 2007. Um, and we knew that Los Lomas probably wasn't going to go forward. We also knew something else could come along and take its place. So we have been negotiating for some time to see if we could acquire the land. So this this whole protracted kind of, uh, would you say city, city council being aggressive, that aggression kind of started in 2002, 2003 area? Yeah, I would say that's about right. I don't remember the history exactly, but it was certainly something that the council took a very firm position of opposition against. And and we were very active in, in talking with the county of Los Angeles and the city of L.A. about um, the impacts of that development and, and, and really did do a lot of... Uh, fairly, you know, aggressive, you know, opposition to the project. You know, ultimately, one of the reasons the district was, the open space district was formed is, is that if we own the land, it can't be developed. You know, not too long ago, we acquired a piece of land that was about 526 acres called Haskell Canyon. Right. Haskell Canyon had, was proposed to have 550 homes on it. We bought it. There's not going to be 550 homes at the intersection of Haskell Canyon and Copper Hill anymore. So the same approach was with Las Lomas. Could we acquire the land? So we've been talking uh, to the owners of the property, and there's really two principal properties out there, uh, Gateway Ranch and, and another one called Valley Vista. And we've been talking to the owners of the larger parcel, about 300 acres, uh, Gateway Ranch, for some time. And we've been working through the Trust for Public Land. And, and I think most people know the Trust for Public Land. Uh, most recently here, here in L.A., they were quite famous for saving the Hollywood sign or the land underneath the Hollywood okay, sure. around the Hollywood sign and so we engaged the trust for public land they have been actively negotiating on our behalf uh, and on behalf of uh, with with the property owner and not not too long ago several months ago we t came to a um, a tentative agreement with them and that uh, went to the City Council uh, on July 11th and the council approved us spending a portion of the open space preservation district funds toward the ultimate purchase of Las Lomas. There's some other pieces of the puzzle that have to come together, some money from the State Wildlife Conservation Board. Uh, we're hoping to get, in fact, I have a tour out there later this afternoon oh, really? uh, with the, with some folks from Caltrans to get some, hopefully, some money from Caltrans for mitigation funds. But if we can put the pieces of the puzzle together, it is our hope we'll be able to purchase Gateway Ranch and open it to the public um, at by the end of the year. And now where is this uh, parcel located? 
Uh, that's the Gateway Ranch is a portion of that land. It's fundamentally from about Calgrove Boulevard to the top of the New Hall Pass on the east side of the five. That's mm -hmm. the best way I can describe it. And when you say it would be opened up, uh, how would, would the city have uh, hiking trails through there? Or I mean, for the for the benefit of of area residents. I mean, absolutely. How that we already have some trails in there with a little canyon called Wildwood Canyon. It's about a hundred acres. Oh. But ultimately, we'd be, we would begin to link all these trails together. It'll take us a little bit of time because we'll, you know, you always have to go in and clean the property up a little bit. Um, you know, getting gates and signage and mapping trails. You know, take can take us a year to a year and a half to get all that type of stuff done. But ultimately, our hope would be to link those trails, and they're right across the f freeway from Towsley Canyon. And so you can begin to imagine, and we own Ellesmere Canyon on the other side of 14. So you start to think about this from a conceptual perspective, you can really begin to develop some pretty significant hiking and passive recreation opportunities. Not to mention the wildlife is going to be thrilled. So basically the idea is with some of this assistance from the outside agencies, you're, you're able to put together a system of trails that goes from you know one end of the pass all the way to the other end of the town. Absolutely, basically. yeah. yeah well, that's, that's, that's one right. of the goals. And so the, the state agencies, they kind of uh, help through grants and, and through uh, through federal aid. Also, obviously not state agents through federal aid, but there's also federal aid available with the kind of the planning? Um, I, yeah, we have used federal aid through the uh, National Park Service. Um, a lot of that trail planning comes through a, a, a recreational trails program. So yeah, there's a lot of pieces. You have federal, state, uh, the county has been a great partner in this as well. Uh, Santa Monica Mountains Conservancy, it's within their zone. Um, there's a lot of partners in here, so there's a lot of, you know, putting, as I describe it, putting the pieces of the puzzle together. Awesome, and so we'll certainly talk a little bit more about what the city's doing with its hiking trails and its website uh, when we get back from our break. This is the City Spotlight Show, and we'll be right back. This is your hometown station, AM 1220, KHTS.